Hi, it's Lee from the Japanese Water Gardens. As the weather gets colder and the days get shorter, our fish's metabolism will start to slow down and we will need to make few changes to our maintenance and feeding practices. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what we should be doing and thinking about with our koi ponds moving into winter. When the water temperature has dropped below 11 or 12 degrees, cut back on the amount of fish food you are feeding. Feed the fish once or twice a day and only as much as they will consume within a few minutes. You can buy wheat germ fish food, a special food made especially for winter that is easier for your fish to digest than the high protein summer feeds. Check out my wheat germ video for more information about this. If the water becomes very cold, the fish will stop showing much interest in the food and might become quite dormant spending most of the time at the bottom of the pond resting. When this happens, it is probably best to cease feeding entirely. It is not going to be a problem if your fish spend a month or two without feeding. If you do want to toss in a few cubes of frozen food, then that's fine. They will be easily digested and help to sustain the fish. I would suggest doing this every other day or so. Don't overdo it though. Less is better than too much. In the old days, it was common practice to lift the pump up off the bottom of the pond, or even switch off the pump and drain out the filter. This is definitely not something I would recommend. It does not preserve the living bacteria in the filter system, and the stagnant water on the bottom of the pond can become a great breeding ground for parasites and bacteria. Obviously, if you are feeding less, then the filters are going to be taking out less solids and they will have less work to do in general but it is still important to stay on top of them keep the sponges clean flush away any sediment accumulations water changes should still be done in winter you can cut back to once a fortnight or maybe once a month but don't just rely on rainwater to keep the pond topped up it is very easy to just assume that everything will be just fine with the water parameters during winter, but this is not always the case. So keep checking the ammonia, nitrites and pH with a decent test kit. Avoid the dipsticks, they are a complete waste of time and money. A problem that is very common in winter, with seemingly increased frequency, is pH crash. A serious problem where the water becomes a strong acid. I did a video on pH crash that tells you a lot more about it. Do you need to heat the pond? This is a question that I get asked a lot and I am planning on doing a couple of videos on this soon. Whether you fit a heater or not though, it is definitely a good idea to try and stabilize the temperature of the pond with a cover or some insulation. It is surprisingly how effective a tarp can be. A cover for the pond will also help keep out falling leaves another debris from the pond. If the pond does freeze over, it is important to maintain a breathing hole for the fish. Don't get out a hammer and start whacking the surface, that will stress the fish. Melting the ice with salt is also not a good idea at all. It causes a rapid drop in temperature, which is likely to kill the fish. If you don't believe me and still think that this is a good idea, search YouTube for Salt Ice Challenge. The best way to make the breathing hole is to melt the ice with hot water from a kettle. Winter is a time when you naturally will be spending less time with your fish, but don't ignore the pond entirely. Keep a watch on things and everything then should run smoothly. If you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to the channel. Post any questions in the comments below. It's bye for now from Lee at the Japanese Water Gardens.